So the first one that we'll present is uh, Said or Sadja Rumens, an artist in search of context, form, and color, and context, form, color, and context. Please be my guest, Said.
Thank you very much, Said. It was in a very mm -hmm. nice way to present all the artists that will present uh, after you. So thank you very much. Uh, the next one I would like to uh, present is Eliana Henen. She describes her practice as a quest for sound and the tangible. So be my guest, Eliana. Hi, everyone. I'm going to share my screen. Soms, soms, soms ren, soms ren ik gewoon, soms, soms ren ik gewoon heel. Heel hard. Soms ren ik gewoon heel hard. Soms. Soms ren ik gewoon heel hard door. Gewoon heel hard door het huis. Soms ren ik gewoon heel hard door het huis. Eerst. Soms ren ik gewoon heel hard door het huis. Eerst de. Soms ren ik gewoon heel hard door het huis. Eerst de trap op. Eerst de trap op tot. Trap op tot aan. Soms ren ik gewoon heel hard door het huis. Eerst de trap op tot aan de zolder. Soms ren ik gewoon heel hard door het huis. Eerst de trap op tot aan de zolder. Van. Soms ren ik gewoon heel hard door het huis. Eerst de trap op tot aan de zolder van de... Soms ren ik gewoon heel hard door het huis. Eerst trappen tot aan de zolder van de leuning. Van de leuning af. Eerst de trap op tot aan de zolder van de leuning af weer. Van de leuning af weer naar. Van de leuning af weer naar beneden. Soms ren ik gewoon heel hard door het huis. Eerst de trap op tot aan de zolder van de leuning af weer naar beneden. Rennend. Rennend naar. Rennend naar de. Naar dat douche. Soms ren ik gewoon heel hard door het huis. Eerst de trap op tot aan de zolder. Van de leuning af weer naar beneden. Rennend naar de douche. Stuiterend. Soms ren ik gewoon heel hard door het huis. Eerst de trap op tot aan de zolder. Van de leuning af weer naar beneden. Het rennend naar de douche. Stuiterend onder. Ren het naar de douche, stuiterend onder het. Stuiterend onder het water. Soms ren ik gewoon heel hard door het huis. Eerst de trap op tot aan de zolder, van de leuning af weer naar beneden. Ren het naar de douche, stuiterend onder het water. Ren het naar de douche, stuiterend onder het water. Ren het naar de douche, stuiterend onder het water. Druipend. Soms ren ik gewoon heel hard door het huis. Eerst de trap op tot aan de zolder, van de leuning af weer naar beneden. Ren het naar de douche, stuiterend onder het water. Druipend naar. 
de slaapkamer. Soms ren ik gewoon heel hard door het huis. Eerst de trap op het aan de zolder, van de leuning af weer naar beneden, rennend naar de douche, tuiterend onder het water, druipend naar de slaapkamer, koprol. Koprol. Koprol over. Koprol over het bed. Soms. Soms ren ik gewoon heel hard door het huis. Eerst de trap op tot aan de zolder. Van de leuning af weer naar beneden. Ren het naar de douche. Stuiterend onder het water. Druipen naar de slaapkamer. Koppel over het bed. Weer. Weer wat. Wat droger. Weer wat droger ga ik verder. Ik raak. Ik raak het. Ik raak het nu. Nu. Ik raak het nu aan. Ik raak het nu aan. Het voelt. Het voelt. Het voelt glad. Ik raak het nu aan, het voelt glad aan, glad. Alsof, alsof het normaal is. Ik raak het nu aan, het voelt glad aan, glad. Alsof het normaal is. Smooth. Ja. Smooth. Ik raak het nu aan, het voelt glad aan, glad. Alsof het normaal is, smooth, ja, yeah, smooth, dat, dat voelt beter, dat voelt beter, wel, dat voelt beter wel, wel met een gek randje, een gek randje. Als we erbij stilstaan. Wel met een gek randje als we erbij stilstaan. Als we erbij stilstaan voelt, voelt het anders. Anders. Ja. Gek. Als we erbij stilstaan voelt het anders. Anders. Ja, gek. Wel met een gek randje. Ik raak het nu aan. Het voelt glad aan. Glad alsof het normaal is. Smooth. Ja, smooth. Dat voelt beter. Wel met een gek randje. Als we erbij stilstaan, voelt het anders. Anders. Ja. Gek. So there.
Thank you very much, um, Eliana. Uh, the next they will present is Lien Vertesse. She has an interest in a person, thing or situation that has two opposite features and therefore seems strange. Lien, please be my guest. Uh, applause for Lien. Thank you, Rule. Um, so yeah, I have a video um, and it's okay if you don't hear anything because it has no sound. So I'm going to share it.
So the next we would like to present is uh, Luca van der Perre. Um, as an artist, she wants to give everything she got without any concerns, literally out of Dutch, taking everything out of the cupboard without bothering the result that comes out of it, nothing. Her presentation is called There's a River in, a, in My Room and a Plate with Milk. Uh, warm applause for Luca van der Perre. Hey folks, um, while I'm starting up my presentation, I would suggest that you all put on your headphone if you can. And for the people who didn't put on their camera yet, please do, because um, I want to see your beautiful face. <laughs> and it will be a more um, interactive presentation. So um, if you're all settled and ready to go, please uh, give me a sign. Hello, everyone. I'd like to take you on an imaginary trip when I tell you this story. Pretend you can see everything happening in your mind. Now, follow the instructions. Close your eyes and don't turn off your camera. Ready? One, two, three.
Well, well done. done. Don't, Don't open, open your, your eyes, eyes yet. yet. Bring, Bring your, your thumbs, thumbs up to your, your eyelids, eyelids right, right away. away. And push, and push gently. gently. Not, not too, too hard. hard. I, repeat, I repeat, not, not too, too hard. hard. Slowly open your eyes again. Pick something from the room that you will stare intensely at for the next three minutes. You all may now enter the void.
Thank you. So the next one they will present is uh, Jules Van Damme. He doesn't like to be super accurate and has a passion for music. Is um, Jules in the house? Yes, sir. Wait, eh? Okay, my scherm did. like with basic materials that you have in house like glue and duct tape and thunderstokes and like elastics because you can make a lot of like beautiful things with it even though they are like everywhere actually cynische mensen zijn net heel gevoelig ze weten niet wat iemands goed bedoel is als het leven al somber lijkt en blijkt en de toekomst is waar je kijkt. Als je verdrietig bent, blijf je verdrietig. En dan voel je je nutteloos, klein en nietig. Onzekerheid is een zwakke schakel. Twijfelend of ze willen horen, het gekakel. Mogen stond heeft goud in de mond, maar wil ik wel nog leven op de grond. Geduld raakt op, ik heb een korte lont. Mijn gevoelens springen in het rond. Heel gevoelig zijn cynische mensen. Heel gevoelig kan je grenzen. Je weet niet wat iedereen wil wensen, niet alleen cynische mensen. Ja, yeah, made it like about an article. So thank you, Jules. Uh, applause from everybody. Um, the next okay. one will be Victor van der Putten. Uh, Victor van der Putten is trying to find the playful in the absurd through experiments. Okay, so for me, it started with. Um, a collection I made uh, together with my dad. We collected like a lot of like tech trash, uh, I call it. And I thought it was very interesting because technology has become so important to us. But from the moment something is like broken, we have to replace it. And I think the beauty and all the, yeah, all the items, like all the parts of the technology that people work so hard on, like just get thrown away, like, so I we collected it and this was a little bit like my inspiration uh, on everything I worked on the last couple of weeks. Then I made this one with like only like the trash. Uh, his name is like Fredobot3000 on a leash. Uh, it's like a robot dog on like a leash. Um, I tried to like program him like to to walk. So I have a video of this. And yeah, my inspiration was kind of like to work with like the parts of like technology that can do so much, but because it's broken and useless and nobody uses it anymore, it's just useless and like, yeah, trash. Um, then I started to um, work more on like designs. I wanted to make something like cute um, a little bit more. So I made this one, his name is Dolly. 
it's like a mutated koala. Um, it's like with different materials because I really like to like mix different materials. Um, so yeah, he was like my new like mascot for my brand. And then I thought about it like maybe I can make like toys. So my idea was that I wanted to um, get him like or her like 3D like printed so I could make my toys from the trash. So I could kind of recycle the, the trash, but like in a new way. So I made like a, a logo, it's still like in progress and like a box, like, but this is also still in progress. Like my idea is to like really make like a toy and make like different ones. And everyone has like their own story and their own like tale about them. And yeah. And then I also uh, used other parts of the trash to make like artworks, almost like more 2D, like paintings kind of. Um, that I wanted to print like in big to make like flyers and like advertising for the the toys, like the company. Um, so as you can see, like the dots are like inspiration, how I want to get the artwork to look like this printing style. Um, to advertise the, the company quotes, because it's just a concept I'm not gonna like, it's not gonna be real, I just want like, the concept like to be there and like the stories of like the trash and like the the broken technology and the creatures that I made to give them like a new life. Uh, these are some other ones like for posters. Um, I want to print them and big like bad quality. So they almost become like an image or like a, a photo. Uh, so Maya, uh, Maya likes to introduce you to her fascination, a fascination for what we all experience consciously or unconsciously. I give the word to Maya. Hello everyone. Uh, for my presentation, I made an audio. Um, before I start, I want to say um, I, um, you need to put your headphones on because the sound is better when you use your headphones. I'm going to share my screen. Have you any dreams you'd like to sell? Red-eyed rabbit, man in gorilla suit, dead grandma, experience Concrete dream, cross. observe woman dream, hair process in a box. dream, legs, remember dream, curtains. forget dream, white cylinder, Dream to tonight, dream Heavy today, darkness. dream color, dream black. color, dream black, dream black, and white, dream color, dream color, dream black, dream black, and white, and white, dream conscious, dream conscious, dream unconscious, dream unconscious, dream on purpose, dream on purpose, dream lucid, dream lucid, dream blind, dream blind, dream reflection, dream reflection, reflection of itself, ideal image. What she's supposed to see. Image fading. Image opaque. Does everybody, Does everybody dream? dream? Do I dream? Do I dream? Do you dream? Do you dream? Do you dream, Do you dream anxiously? anxiously? Nightmare. Nightmare. Illusion. Illusion. Camera. Camera. Delusion. Delusion. Vision. Vision. Imagination. Imagination. A fascination. Fascination of the uncomfortable feeling. Just not transparent. What Red does her dream? Rabbit. What does Man her dream in feel? Gorilla suit. Will the dreaming end? Dead grandma. Red eyed Red rabbit. Eyed rabbit. Man eating in gorilla, suit. in gorilla suit. Hair in a box. Dead grandma. Dead grandma. Legs. Concrete Blind. cross. Concrete cross. Curtain. Bleeding woman. Bleeding white woman. cylinder. Hair in a Hair box. In a box. Leg. Half leg. Darkness. Flying. Flying. Curtains. Curtains. White cylinder. White cylinder. Darkness. Darkness. Heavy darkness. Heavy darkness. Awake. Where is it? Why does it take so long? It's back. Have you any till she sleeps? Like to sell? Till she's awake. Want to hear them. It gets lost. To experience how you experience. After cameras, lost. 
Her description feels like nearly no transparency. It's a matter of consciousness. It's a matter of immobility. In color. In black and white. In color. In reflecting on his white. It's about what I saw. Well, I don't see anyone. Why do I have this fascination? It rarely comes back as an exact copy. I want to be able to touch. I want to be able to touch. I want to be able to. I want to be able to taste, smell, smell, feel, experience, experience. Would you sell them if your dreams were abundant? I would package my dream, airtight, keep them. Puncturing the Why do I have this fascination? Touching something she doesn't know what it is. Have you any dreams you'd like to sell? I want to hear them. I want to experience how you experience them. I want to know your thoughts after Would you freedom. sell them if your dreams were abundant? Personality in her dreams I would provides my, my fascination. Dream. Airtight. Keep them. Fascination for not understanding. Passing. And forgetting her. something she doesn't the know what of it her is. own dream. Because she didn't realize. I forget them. My I want to know illusion. why she didn't realize it for Sometimes. eternity. I why it didn't get stuck in her, her head. But after going Why do I have blood, this fascination? No trace. Away from where Have you any dreams you'd like to see? Red-eyed sell? rabbit. I want to hear them. Man in gorilla suit. I want to experience how you that experience grandma. them. Concrete I want to know your thoughts after feeling them. Leading woman. I Hair forget them. In a box. My own illusions. Legs. So I, Kurt, I experience them by feeling it. But after darkness. going back and forth, heavy darkness. they leave no trace. Away from where they were. Have you any dreams you'd like to sell? Why it I want to get hear them in her head. I want to experience how you experience them. I want to know your thoughts after feeling them. Why do I have this fascination? Have you any dreams you'd like to sell? Have you any I want dreams to hear them. you'd like to sell? I want to experience how you experience them. I want to experience how you experience them. I want to know your thoughts after feeling them. I want to know your thoughts after feeling them. I want to experience how you experience them. I want to know your thoughts after feeling them. I want to experience them. I want to experience how you experience them. I want to know your thoughts after feeling them. This was my audio. Uh, finally, I want to ask you a question. Uh, I'm collecting dreams of people. And if you have a dream you remember, uh, you can always send it to me. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Maya. Very inspiring. Um, the next artist that I would like to present to you is Louise Verseler. Uh, currently, her practice develops around themes such as superficiality, image, pretense, and false cheerfulness. I give the word to Louise. Um, um, I had a hard time finding how to describe my work, um, so I thought I would just read a text from someone who's always got your back uh, when it comes to explaining something you have a hard time explaining yourself. So I'm going to read the text of Toon Telligen. Um, op een ochtend had de eco een zoon haast om te zien of zijn wenkbrauwen wel goed zaten dat hij tegen zijn spiegel botste. De spiegel viel en brak in honderd stukken. Bedroefd keek de eekhoorn naar de scherven en zag overal verspreid delen van zijn staart, zijn neus, zijn tenen en zijn kin. Zo kan ik nooit zien of alles wel goed zit, dacht hij, en hij liet de ekster komen. Mijn spiegel, zei hij, en hij wees naar de scherven. Ik zie het, zei de ekster, die niets liever deed dan spiegels repareren. Hij is wel heel erg kapot. Ja, zei de eekhoorn. De ekster raapte de stukken op en begon ze zo goed en zo kwaad als het ging weer aan elkaar te zetten. Niet alle stukken pasten meer of kwamen op de goede plaats terecht. En toen de eekhoorn even later in de spiegel keek, zag hij er zeer eigenaardig uit. Zijn voet zat achter zijn staart, zijn kin hing aan een elleboog en zijn ene oog stond recht onder het andere oog. Alles zit door elkaar, zei hij. Je moet je ogen een beetje dichtknijpen, zei de ekster. Dan valt het best mee. De eekhoorn kneep zijn ogen half dicht en keek in de spiegel. Maar hij leek nergens op. En waar is mijn linkeroor? riep hij opeens. Hij bekeek de spiegel aan alle kanten, maar nergens vond hij zijn linkeroor. 
zeker zoek geraakt, zei de ekster. Hij haalde zijn schouders op en zei, kom, ik ga maar eens. Hoe kan ik nou zien of mijn oor goed zit, riep de eekhoor nog. Maar de ekster stond al in de deur, nam een aanloop en vloog weg. Thuisgekomen haalde hij de scherf van de spiegel die één oor van de eekhoorn weerkaatste onder zijn vleugel vandaan. Heel voorzichtig plakte hij hem aan de andere scherven die al bijna een hele muur van zijn kamer bedekten. Prachtig, mompelde hij. Hij draaide zich om en om voor de reusachtige spiegel. Ik word steeds mooier, kraste hij. En hij genoot van zijn linkeroor, zijn slurf, zijn schubben, zijn twee stekels en zijn ene steeltje rechts op zijn enorme grijze hoofd. Then now the next artist that I would like to present to you is Susan Smith. Susan is chaotic. Susan finds structure in her chaos. Susan likes to read. Susan rarely reads. Susan likes to work with textile. Susan studied textile design. Susan never finished textile design. Susan studied fashion. Susan didn't finish her student study. Susan likes to fantasize. Susan likes to fantasize about mythical beings. Susan likes to draw. Susan likes to draw on her, on, her, on her own terms. Susan is building nests now. Susan thinks that her nest is a part of her identity and that it talks about relations between people and herself. Susan has lots of identity crises. Susan tries to integrate this in her work. Susan will present her work now. Susan thanks Rule for reading this and apologizes for the repetition of her name. The word is to Susan. Thank you, Ru. I will start uh, sharing my screen now. The yellow fog that rubs its back upon the window panes. The yellow smoke that rubs its muscle on the window panes. Licked its tongue into the corners of the evening. Lingered upon the pools that stand in drains. Let fall upon its back the soot that falls from chimneys. Slipped by the terrace, made a sudden leap. And seeing that it was a soft October night, curled once about the house and fell asleep. Um, I like this, I like this uh, extract because it really speaks to my imagination. It, I can almost see this cat-like figure rubbing its back upon the window panes. And I just, yeah, I just really enjoy the poem. So I would like to present uh, now Ariana Salens. Ariana would like to give you an insight to the optimistic woman with great social intelligence. This woman is someone curious and interested in the world. She is on a discovery route. <clears throat> I give the word to Ariana. Okay. Well, uh, something went wrong with the exportation of my video, so I have to do it on this way. My name is Ariane. Wel, momenteel zit ik op mijn stoel. Aan mijn bureau. Ik noem het mijn, mijn creatieve werkplaats. Af en toe valt er in het leven wat te lachen. Om komieke of bijgelukkige momenten met familie of vrienden of zo. Maar het is overwegend tragisch. Je bent geboren en je weet niet waarom. Je bent hier en je weet niet waarom. Je leeft en je sterft. Mensen lijden. Mensen leven in voortdurende angst. De wereld is vol armoede en corruptie en oorlog en nazi's en tsunamis. Het netto resultaat, de balans. Aan het einde is dat je verliest. Je wint niet van de bank.
intersecting individuals. Think how strange this is. We all share the same qualities as the other people, such as walking upright, hairless bodies, large brains, and a predisposition for language. All because we are related by distance and crossbreeding. The divergence between individuals, the mutation accumulates into a population. We worry about what fills the space. Two natural Neanderthals who create an experience of love. The physical transfer, but also the mental. Bacteria that are transferred from gene to gene. The loss between two individuals. A spark that does not break through society. Soulmates forever, until death do us part. That's what I claim to be unconditional love. This is me, the optimistic woman with great social intelligence. She is someone curious and interested in the world. She is on a discovery route. Yeah. <clears throat> that was it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ariana. Um, so
So I would like to introduce the next artist. It's Brent van Kerkhoven. Brent van Kerkhoven uh, gives you a shot in the dark, which is better than a walk in the park. My name is Peter Steele and I do nothing. I am a kind, wonderful human being, sees the value in all life, lover of all living things, typical Question B, answer C, question B, answer C, question C, answer C. Wrong. Again. Question A, answer A, question B, answer B, question C, answer C, question D, answer A. Almost. But again. And now we, the following will be uh, Christina Chicken. Christina's presentation is called As Curious and As Ordinary Curiosity Can Be a Suggestion. I give the word. Then I will be starting now. Thank you. 
Eens binnen springen hij. Hij wacht hierboven. Kijk goed, maar je bent de vulbak vergeten. Ik dacht dat dit iets interessant was om te lezen voor jou. Waar zijn de kaarsjes? Wil jij mij eens opbellen als je tijd hebt? How don't you know? Haha. <laughs> Waarom is iedereen zo melig? Ik ben al buiten geweest, was killende. Mijn gsm valt heel de tijd uit van de kou. Je mag me altijd bellen. Ik geloof in je. Ik zal het subiet tonen, maar het is echt wek. Ik gok 54%. Een pet is stille pet. Waarom moeten ze binnenspringen? Waarom wacht hij boven? Waarom zijn ze de vuilbak vergeten? Waarom leek het je interessant? Waarom heb je kaarsjes nodig? Waarom moeten ze je opbellen? Waarom is het belangrijk? Waarom is iedereen zo melig? Waarom ben je naar buiten geweest? Waarom heb je je gsm nodig? Waarom moeten ze je nog eens bellen? Waarom hebben ze steun nodig? Waarom wil je het tonen? Waarom gok je? Why is a pet still a pet? Neither natural nor artificial. Artificial, we expect something more, more natural. We seek comparable primal force of nature to go beyond all that is given. Thank you, Lee. <laughs> Thank you very much, Christina. And now I would like to introduce Emil van den Dalen. He made a video and I likes to add that he didn't want to visualize a timeline about his artistic past or future, but rather to visualize his triggers and inspirations he finds in the world. I give the word to word or the and the image to Emil. Thank you.
Applause, 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 and more applause. Uh, the next uh, presentation is from Camille de Rose. She's intrigued in what could come out of her belly. In that sense, she's looking in what way feelings could be expressed in art. I give the word to Camille. Hello. Uh, okay. Um, hello. Can you see everything? I need yeah, to show my screen. Sorry. Um, okay. Um, so, um, this is my uh, first thing. I love to, um, this is one of the um, things that we have to had to make um, because we are so far away from each other uh, during Corona and we had to make postcards and send it to each other. So I really liked doing this and I love to create my own reality or um, uh, city at night and everything that happens in the houses it's like I can um, create this in my own drawings. And uh, yeah, it's my inspiration is because I love to um, wander around the city and walk at night when the lights um, are glowing and everything is dark because it gives me a very uh, calming feeling. And I love to put this on paper and make something out of it. So I made this in one night, like um, I had a fight with someone and I like to put my feelings on paper and draw out of this because um, it's like to my frustrations and everything that I can't um, explain to this person, then I can put it on paper and explain it in this way. It's like sort of meditation and yeah, I need to do this because I get very close to myself when I try to do these things. And like sometimes it's hard to explain how you feel towards a person who um, you're fighting with or have a conflict. And this is my way of dealing with it in some way. Is 
it didn't work out, but that doesn't mean that some, the thing that came out of it was also something interesting, I think. In the second piece. It's a very special um, material. It's alginate. It's based on seaweed, and it's uh, better to put on your body when you want to because it's not very with chemicals and stuff, and it's more healthy if you want to make something like that. Um, yeah, the texture and everything was very very interesting. Okay. The next artist that I would like to present to you is Luca Rosa. She would like to fight against injustice and is still wondering whether this should be part of her work or not. Anyway, as she wrote me today, yesterday was the most fierce day of my life. I would like to give the word to Luca. Thank you very much, Hugo. And uh, thank you all for still listening. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Who am I? Who am I? I don't know what I want to say. I don't even know who I am. What do I want to say? What am I doing? Who am I? What am I doing? What are you doing? Do you even know why you're doing it? Or do you just pretend you know? I mean, should I pretend? Um, does that mean I'm playing a game if I'm pretending? Or did I just lose the game now? Um, am I right here? Who am I? Am I right here? Or should I leave from another perspective? from another perspective. Am I interesting? Does it matter? Um, people who are interesting, are they interesting on purpose? I mean, does it matter? Where can we draw the line on what is beautiful? Where can we draw the line on what is in balance? When is something in balance? Um, can you capture your balance? Can anyone capture his balance? Where can we draw the line of balance? Where can we draw the line on being beautiful? On what is beautiful? Uh, you are beautiful. Everything is subjective, so I find you beautiful. Is my art beautiful? Is my art meant to be beautiful? Sh 
should I, why not make just disgusting art? Is being beautiful even a good thing? Or, or is it even important? Um, how can I disengage in the systematic things I hate? When are you in balance? Can you capture your balance? Like I'm trying. <laughs> How can I disengage in the in the in the systematic things I hate? Is is disengaging my aim? What is my aim? Do I have an aim? And most importantly, does it even matter? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Luca. Okay. Next one will be Kato van Nerum. Her presentation will be an attempt to make a con Catenation of her own thought fabric. I give the word to Kato. Thank you. Uh, I will, my Wi-Fi connection isn't that stable, so I hope it will work. Can you see everything? Okay. I am restless unknowing, self-discovering, melancholic, angry, sad, nervous, grateful, tired, sensitive, eager, calm, a perfectionist, an overthinker, disappointed, amazed, lazy, insecure, Easy going, full of worries, desiring, an introvert, worried, stressed, sleepy, patient, bored, powerless, impulsive, alive. I am alive. My grandmother always used to tell me stories. Stories about other people who lived in the village. How the daughter of the baker loved the color pink and refused to wear or eat anything other than pink clothes or pink food. Or that one story about the mayor of the village. He had a piece of a grenade stuck in his leg but I don't think the story was about that. I'm not sure if I still remember everything. 
sometimes I catch myself confusing reality with fiction. Like, after a while, I don't remember if it was real or if I dreamed it. But I like it that way. I do remember a story about a little boy who was always angry and couldn't stop being angry. His face just always had a little blush of red. So his mother was the number one client of the drugstore. She spent all her family's money on makeup for the little boy. My grandmother was a woman who loved the sky. She fell in love with it on a really normal day. The sky was lovely blue, is what she would say, when in fact, it was also a little bit gray. But that is something I never tell her, because as you may know, my grandmother is colorblind. When I was little, there once flew a bird right at me. He was as black as the night without his lights. After that, I always slept with a nightlight. But I don't like to talk about myself. It's just a really strange day to do so. Like, I don't love the number 11. It's just too many ones. My grandmother was also scared of double numbers. That reminded me of that one story about the young lady in green. She was always working in her garden. So she always wore green overalls within her left pocket, a garden shovel. But actually, none of that mattered. I can say whatever I want. And everyone always listens. They don't actually care about that. It is all nonsense. But for me, it's not. So when it isn't nonsense for me, then it is real. And when it's real, I'm sure I don't dream. When I dream, my dreams always have like a color filter. So everything is a little less ugly. But that also doesn't matter because my grandmother is, as you now know, colorblind. Thank you very much again. It's uh, what a what a nice way to enter the weekend, I would say. Um, so, is Namzrai in uh, the house? Namzrai, can you say something if you are? Okay, then uh, we have a last presentation by Ben de Grava. And uh, this is, uh, he couldn't be there neither, but he uh, asked me if I could um, show it to all of you. So I will share now my screen uh, to share the video of uh, Ben de Grave. Ben de Grave, he's curious about how objects in ready mates could evoke other meanings. So this is his presentation. Possum. I picked it up by the head, which had grown clammy inside the bag, drawing to it a fair amount of fluff and dirt, and pushed the obscene tongue back into its mouth. Then I blew away the black fibres from its eyes and lifted out the stiff, furry body attached to its neck with rusted nails. 
The pause had been retracted by means of a small rotating mechanism contained within the bag handle itself, and I detached the connecting wires from the small circuit pad drilled into its back. Forcing my hand through the hole in its rear, around which in recent years I had positioned a small number of razor blades, I felt within for the concealed wooden handle. Locating it and ignoring the pain along my forearm, I swerved the head slowly left and right, supporting the main body with my free hand while holding it up against my grubby mirror. I'd come home to bury it, which was as good a place as any, despite my growing dislike of the mild southern winters. Yet, having stepped from the train carriage earlier that afternoon and sensed, by association I presume, the stretch of abandoned line passing close behind my old primary school, up towards the beach and the marshes beyond, I'd elected to burn it instead, on one of Christie's stupid bonfires, if he was still up to building them. Despite my plans, I'd felt inclined to unveil it mid-journey and hold what was left up against the compartment window as we passed through stations, my own head concealed, naturally. But I'd thought better of that, I dare say rightly. In any case, the bag concealing it drew inevitable attention when, entering the underpass on my way back to the house, one of the legs shot out, startling two small boys who were attempting to hurry past. Years of adjustments to the inner mechanism had enabled the puppet's limbs to extend outward at alarming speed, so that when operated in the presence of suggestible onlookers, it looked as though the legs of some demonic creature, coarse and furred, had darted swiftly from an unseen crevice. Then, as happened rather beautifully on this occasion, the perturbed child, or children, more often than not would catch sight of a second, larger hole, carefully positioned at the rear of the bag to capture peripheral vision and glimpse within its eye following them home. The effect, I'm pleased to say, was rather stunning, yet, like any great performance, had taken me years of practice to perfect. Christie had not been at home when I'd arrived, although as usual the front door had been left unlocked and the kitchen table crammed with large piles of rubbish awaiting destruction. Stacked among the old comics and clothes I'd found the familiar contents of my bedroom drawer, along with an old tube of my skin cream and a skull fragment I'd once dug up at the beach. Having retrieved these, I'd drunk a large measure of his whisky, tried the lounge door, which unsurprisingly was locked, then taken my bag up to the bedroom. The walls had been repapered again with spare rolls from the loft, familiar cartoon faces from either my sixth or seventh year. The boards were still damp, the floor slimy, and a strong odour of paste hung heavily in the cramped room. I'd opened a window, the weather was indeed horribly mild, and switched the overhead bulb off, favouring darkness for what I was about to do. Although the body was that of a dog, Possum's head was made of wax and shaped like a human's, and I could not have wished for a more convincing likeness. Capturing even my old acne scars, yet with hair less neat and a gaunt quality reminiscent of the physical state I'd embodied when the mould was made, the eyes were its greatest feature. Belonging to what had once been a bull terrier, both were former lab specimens, heavily diseased, preserved together for years in an old jar of formaldehyde. Several minor adjustments and refinements made by a past colleague, a long-dead teacher of science to whom my work had strangely appealed, had turned them into hard, bright, unique-looking decorations for Possum's face. Deceptively cloudy until, caught in the correct light, these two vaguely transparent orbs were the key to Possum's success, and, despite patent similarities in our appearance, evidence of his own distinct personality. My most recent addition to his look, nevertheless, had proved extremely effective. Having attached coloured flypaper to the tongue, which, like the body, was canine in origin, over the previous summer the mouth had accrued a large cluster of dead insects that dropped abruptly into view whenever the puppet licked or swallowed, usually scattering one or two dried blue bottles into my spellbound and horrified audience. A tiny battery-powered mechanism in the concealed handle allowed me to control rudimentary facial movements, although I'd never once bothered learning how to throw my voice. Possum's wide-eyed, open-mouthed stare penetrated well enough during his sudden appearances without the need of vocal embellishment. Only ever revealing him at points in my plays when his presence was a complete surprise, his unnerving silence merely served to exacerbate his subsequent chaotic behaviour. Whether I had him devouring other characters without warning, 
perhaps even my hero or heroine, bursting through concealed walls or destroying with unrestrained violence my neat but tedious endings, Possum's soundless, sudden presence held sway over my young audiences like no other puppet I'd ever built. He was a rule unto himself, and now he was beginning to do things I couldn't allow. I leaned closer toward the mirror, reflecting on my most recent performance, and watched the sinking sun darken Possum's face with shadow. I observed how his head continued to stir subtly of its own accord as my body's natural rhythms gradually made their way into his, and I tried in vain to freeze his movements. Then, before it was fully dark, I took Possum outside. There was no sign of frost, but the earth was suitably wet. I dropped him in the stagnant water tank behind the old shed where he couldn't get out and threw mud and stones at him from my vantage point at the rim. I pulled faces at him until I could no longer see anything below me, then went back into the house. I considered waiting up for Christie's return, but instead went straight to bed. I awoke to find it beside me, the long tongue hanging out like a vulgar child's. The head had been turned to face me in my sleep, and its eyes in the dawn light were a pale, milky yellow. As I sat up to scratch the tiny bites covering my legs and ankles, several dry houseflies dropped from the pillow onto my bedsheet. Later, I found a dead wasp tucked inside my pyjama pocket. I pushed Possum to the floor, realising that his head had been wiped clean and his body scrubbed. Sensing that the parlour games had begun, I dressed quickly. I could hear Christy clattering about in the kitchen below. Then I zipped Possum up in my black bag and walked to the school. I didn't stop once along the lane, although I saw enough to know that my old classroom, the scene of Christie's little stunt, had long since disappeared. An extension to the central building almost blocked my view of the playground, where the brick wall over which I'd escaped had been painted over with a large, smiling face. I passed the second of two remote, mobile classrooms, decorated with nativity displays, and continued on towards the familiar stone steps leading down to the abandoned station. I followed these onto the empty platform, examining the shelter on the opposite side of the track. Despite an abundance of thick spray paint and several smashed windows, the place was abandoned. I stepped down quietly onto the disused line. The metal tracks had been ripped up long before I was born, and the banks on each side of the route, beyond the declining platform, were heavily overgrown. The ancient trail turned sharply to the left before reaching a small concealed footpath that snaked off into the trees. I brushed aside overhanging branches as I forced my way along it, pausing several times to pinpoint exactly where I'd once built my secret camp. Further along, I found the old tree I'd climbed to impress friends and the small slope we'd raced down. Beyond these, hidden beneath the thickest trees, was the place I was looking for. I crouched down on the approaching path and located a suitable vantage point. I made my way over to a dense row of bushes and knelt behind the leaves. The ground around me was littered with empty crisp packets and crushed tins. Nearby lay scattered the feathers of a dead bird. Sooner than I expected to, I developed cramp, and making as little movement as possible shifted weight to my hands. Then I settled down to wait, keeping absolutely still. When I finally heard someone approaching, I unzipped my bag. Possum's face looked up at me as I drew back the black leather, his eyes twinkling beneath the overhead sun. I gave him some muddy leaves to eat and was in the process of extricating the rest of his body when I heard other sounds coming from behind. Someone else was approaching at speed and I barely had time to conceal Possum when a tall man appeared from within the trees. He wore walking shoes and a fashionable winter coat and carried a school rucksack under one arm. His face was hostile and suspicious. Good morning, I said. Without replying, he moved off swiftly in the direction of the approaching child, calling loudly. I stood up, finding myself unable to move due to the numbness in my legs, and grabbed the handle of my bag. I waited, suspecting that I might require the use of Possum's limbs in order to effect a diversion worthy of pantomime. But no one else appeared, and the man did not return. As soon as I could, I walked home through a great many winding streets. Um, thank you for, for all the presentation. I thought it was amazing. 
You did a great job. Guys, now I'm allowed to say something. I was holding so hardly back. <laughs> no, uh, very impressive. Very impressive, very well done. Um, I just wrote it in the chat. I win the first Bachelor of the Master. Um, I saw super nice things. Really, really um, looking forward to continue working with you. And even in times of lockdown and all these difficult conditions, absolutely cool, um, brave and productive. So from my side, looking forward to 21. Guys, if you if you want to say something, please go ahead. <laughs> You're very much invi invited. Thanks all for listening also. And me too, I was really impressed by even my classmates who I just met like four weeks <laughs> in real life. So it was really nice to see it. Thanks, Eliana. Uh, I also want to say I I'm impressed with the work and also with uh, with the support you have for each other. Like really nice atmosphere. It was nice to watch. Thanks, Ula. I agree. Great you stayed all the time. <laughs> yeah. That shows your uh, support and enthusiasm. Mm -hmm.